Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, you've been asking for a Vampire Chronicles video for some time and today is the day I finally deliver and I'm sorry it's taken so long. I don't think it's any secret that the Vampire Chronicles is my all time number one favourite vampire franchise. I've made several videos about it in the past, all of which are taking a very, very long time, but it is this kind of franchise that requires complete dedication in order to portray the story correctly. Now, for today's video, I've decided, let's make the ultimate Vampire Chronicles video. So, I'm going to take every single vampire from the franchise and rank them from weakest to strongest. Now, I know this list will cause some debate amongst some of you because, I have to admit, there are fine lines, fine divisions between some of these individuals and I also have to admit I changed this list about 7 or 8 times in terms of where I ranked certain vampires. Anyway, it's done, it's ready, so let's take a look at all 35 Anne Rice vampires from weakest to strongest. Number 35, Claudia. Kicking it off at number 35, we have the sweet and innocent Claudia. Okay, she was anything but sweet and innocent. She was a vicious little killer who had more than her fair share of victims during her six decades as a vampire. She should be considered one of the strongest vampires on this list and had she been in an age-appropriate body suitable for a vampire, then she would have. But unfortunately, Claudia was condemned to the body of a five-year-old girl. Her mind aged, but her physicality didn't. This limited her greatly as an immortal. She didn't have enough blood within her to create more of her kind. She could be easily overpowered by any adult bodied vampire, and she just wasn't that strong. Claudia had to be clever when choosing her victims. Despite her popularity and having a big role in the first Chronicles novel, she is most definitely the weakest vampire on this list. Number 34 Baby Jenks. If you've ever seen the Queen of the Dams movie, then you won't know who Baby Jenks is. However, if you've read the book, then you'll be very familiar with the 14-year-old vampire Baby Jenks, who had quite a tough start to life. She was a teenage drug addict who was turned into a vampire when on the brink of death from a botched back alley abortion. Yeah, I told you it was pretty rough. Like Claudia, Baby Jenks was still in an adolescent body, but obviously a lot more older than Claudia, which gave her a better advantage in terms of overall strength. She was killed by Akasha, but managed to find peace while she was dying. Number 33, Madeline. Madeline was made by Louis as Claudia's new carer in exchange for him, as he was going to leave Claudia to become Armand's new companion. We didn't get to see too much of Madeline. She had only completed her transition before being sentenced to death by the vampires from the Théâtre des Vampires. She ranks pretty low on this list because we just didn't get enough of her. She wasn't a character that was meant to have proper development, but because she was a fully grown adult vampire, she ranks above the last two. Number 32 Daniel Malloy Daniel Malloy is best known as being the man who initially interviewed Louis during the event of Interview with the Vampire. Despite Louis's attempts to steer Daniel away from the darkness that surrounds the life of a vampire and hoping that he'd learn something from their discussion, Daniel was still overly eager for Louis to turn him, frustrating the vampire who believed he had wasted his time from the beginning. Daniel would get his immortality eventually, but not from Louis. Instead, he began a relationship with Armand with the eventual promise that the latter would make him immortal. Armand was still reluctant to actually follow through, but did so before Lestat's concert. Number 31, Laurent. Laurent was part of Armand's coven of devil worshippers in Paris until Lestat disbanded it. After losing his old way of life, he became one of the first vampires to be part of the Théâtre des Vampires. He lived in the theatre's coven for approximately 80 years until it was destroyed by Louis. He was one of the few who survived the destruction of the theatre and lived into the modern age, but was ultimately killed alongside Baby Jenks during Akasha's rampage in The Queen of the Damned. Number 30, Akabar. Akabar was a vampire obsessed with obtaining Akasha's blood, which he imagined would make him the most powerful of all the vampires. Marius the Romanus and Pandora tried to stop him, but Akabar used Marius' love for the mortal Pandora and drained her to the point of death, 
forcing Marius to turn her into a vampire in order to save her. Akubara eventually managed to gain access to those who must be kept, but was killed by Akasha before he could drink her blood. Number 29. Benedict Benedict was a Christian monk of the 7th or 8th century in France, brought into the blood by Rochemandes around the year 800 AD. Benedict is the vampire from whom the alchemist Magnus stole the blood in order to make himself a vampire, something he was initially refused of by Rochemandes, a theft described in the Vampire Lestad. He later became the love and companion of Rochemandes, ironically. Number 28. Alessandra Alessandra is a Merovingian princess, daughter of King Dagobert I, brought into the blood in the 7th century by Rochemandes. First introduced in the Vampire Lestat as a mad, nameless vampire living with the children of Satan under the Les Innocents Cemetery in Paris, there isn't a lot of information on Alessandra, but her age alone and experience with the children of Satan makes her a pretty powerful vampire. Number 27. Benjamin Mahmoud Benjamin, better known as Benji, was a Palestinian Bedouin boy stolen away by Sibel's brother who changed him to protect her in his mortal life. In 1997, when he was 12, he and Sibel were made vampires by Marius de Romanus for Armand. Marius gives a dark gift to Benji and Sibel because he knew Armand was too afraid to do so himself due to Benji being so young and also the effect it would have on Armand. Despite his age, Benji was incredibly powerful and wasn't limited by his physicality, unlike Claudia and Baby Jenks. Number 26. Sibel Sibel is an American vampire who is a talented, classical pianist. She was changed at the age of 25. She and her friend Benji find Armand after he is badly burned from exposing himself to the sun after he attempts to end his life after seeing Veronica's veil when Lestat returns from his journey. They help Armand recover by bringing him evildoers to feed from, and just as I mentioned previously, Sibel was changed by Marius. Number 25. Bianca Soldarini Bianca is a fledgling of Marius de Romanus and has been fiercely loyal to him for over five centuries. Having Marius' blood within her makes her quite a powerful vampire, as it contains the properties of Akasha's blood. She became a vampire in order to properly care for Marius after he was severely burned. She developed a very close relationship with him and they spent much time together. She believed Marius was just as loyal to her as she was to him. However, when she overheard Marius tell Pandora that he would abandon Bianca if she would take him back herself, she was distraught and left Marius permanently along with Pandora. Number 24. Jesse Reeves Jesse was a distant relative of Maharet who went to live with her after her parents died. At Lestat's rock concert, she managed to get on stage while Lestat was performing. She was identified by vampires as a member of the Talamasca. One of the vampires threw her violently across the room, breaking her neck. Not wanting to die, she asked Maul to change her into a vampire, of which he was willing to do, but Maharet arrived in time and performed the change herself. Despite Jessie's new fledgling status, she was considerably powerful due to having Maharet's blood within her. Number 23. David Talbot David Talbot is a lot more powerful than many would believe. He was initially an elder man who dedicated many years of his life to the Talamasca. He was also fiercely protective of Lestad and seemed to be the only one who could calm him down during one of his tantrums. David's body was stolen by Raglan James who switched consciousness with him. The stat quickly identified the switch, killed Raglan in David's body, and then changed David, who occupied Raglan's body as a vampire. Because he had the stat's blood within him, David's power was a lot more advanced than a new fledgling of his age would be. Number 22. Nicolas de L'Enfant Nicolas de L'Enfant is one of Lestat's earliest fledglings and was also his closest friend at one point. It does appear quite clear that they were once more than friends. Nicky was a very powerful vampire who was once eager to receive the dark gift during his time as a human. Unfortunately, he struggled mentally with the immortality he was given and what once appeared as the excitement of living forever soon turned into a daunting reality. 
he ended his life in the hope to be released from his eternal living prison. Number 21. Gabrielle de Leoncor. The mother of Lestat and someone who's played her cards relatively close to her chest, Gabrielle truly embraced being a vampire and thrived as an immortal. She was quite a selfish individual and showed coldness to anyone who did not comply with her wishes. Lestat changed her into a vampire in a panic as she lay dying. They travelled together for months, but eventually parted ways for several centuries. Number 20. Tarkin Blackwood. Tarkin, better known as Quinn, is now a vampire and fledgling of Petronia. Soon after he is made, Arion, the maker of Petronia, gives Quinn his blood so that Quinn is even stronger. Arion tells Quinn that he must only feed upon people who have committed evil deeds, or evil doers as they are commonly referred to. Quinn is incredibly strong due to the power of the blood within him. Number 19. Magnus. Magnus is probably best known as the maker of Lestad. Initially, he desired immortality desperately and approached Rosha Mendes in order to receive the Dark Gift. He rejected his request, not wanting to expand the number of vampires in France, of which he ruled them like a king. Refusing to accept his decision, Magnus had managed to steal the blood from a young acolyte of Rosha Mendes known as Benedict. He dug up the slumbering vampire, bound him in heavy chains in a catacomb, at the crucial time, right before dusk. As the sun said, Magnus drank the blood from the helpless vampire, stealing the dark gift for himself, making him into an immortal vampire. He eventually became disillusioned with life and chose Lestat as his successor before ending his life. Number 18. Santiago. One of the vampires from the Theatre des Vampires, a group of vampires led by Armand, Santiago strictly upheld the vampire law of never killing your own kind. He exposed Louis and Claudia's murder of Lestat by reading their minds and was integral to Claudia and Madeleine's death. Louis took his revenge on the theatre of vampires and Santiago was one of the casualties. Number 17. Santino. Leader of the satanic Children of Satan Coven, Santino was a 14th century vampire who invaded the villa of Marius de Romanus, burning him and kidnapping Amadeo, Marius's latest fledgling. With Amadeo meaning God's love, it went against what the coven stood for and he was renamed Armand by Santino. Armand was brainwashed into embracing the coven's beliefs and was so impressive that he was placed in charge of his own coven in Paris, the Théâtre des Vampires. Santino was incredibly strong and skillful. He was killed, however, by Thorn as revenge for the attack on Marius. Number 16, Maul. Maul was another who had wronged Marius when he kidnapped him and inserted him as his coven's new god against Marius's wishes. He was considered an ancient vampire due to the fact he was over 2,000 years old. As time went on, he and Marius learned to accept each other and became companions alongside Avicus. After Marius' departure, Maul went on to become the companion of Maharet and was present in the son of a compound when Akasha arrived, ready to relay her plan to the vampires who were there. Number 15. Avicus. Another ancient vampire first created by Akasha's priests, Avicus is one of the oldest vampires in existence. He is far older than Marius but does not know his own strength or how to use his inherent gifts but it is implied in Blood and Gold that his powers are second to Marius. Avicus is from Egypt and was made a vampire by a priest from Akasha's blood cult. He was also allowed to drink from Akasha herself and her powerful blood, coupled with his age, gives him great strength. Number 14, Arjun. Arjun was born in India of noble origin, once a prince of the Chola dynasty. He wasn't as old as many of the other vampires lower on this list, but he was extremely powerful for one particular reason. Amel, the spirit who is responsible for all vampires currently in existence, was able to talk to and act through him, enhancing his abilities. Although Arjun still had some control, Amel could fully take over when it wanted to and at one point killed many young vampires, leaving Arjun with the guilt of their death on his hands. His maker was Pandora and he was also her first companion. Number 13. Eudoxia. Eudoxia is over 1,000 years old and considered an ancient vampire. She had no choice whatsoever in becoming a vampire 
and recounted as happening in minutes after the initial attack. She is extremely powerful due to her age and has a number of vampires at her disposal. She purposely attacked high noble humans in Marius' village in order to draw attention to him, in order for her to be able to take care of Akasha and Ankil instead of Marius doing so. After initially saving her life when Akasha fed on her, Marius drags her back to Akasha, who feeds on her again to the brink of death before incinerating her with the fire gift. Number 12. Armand What can I say about Armand only that he is one of the coolest vampires from the Vampire Chronicles and has arguably the most interesting and well-developed backstory out of everyone. His early life as a painter, his kidnapping and forced enslavement, his rescuing by Marius only to be kidnapped again and brainwashed into a satanic worshipper, it's just brilliant character development. Armand wasn't the strongest vampire around until he fed on Lestad. Absorbing his blood and additional strength, his own story in the Vampire Armand is such a great read. You have to check it out if you haven't done so already. Number 11. Louis de Pont du Lac The vampire that the Chronicles began with, whose story was the center point to interview with the vampire, who introduced us to Lestat and Claudia, Armand, Louis is one of the most important characters in the franchise. He was extremely unique because he held on to his humanity while battling his vampire nature. Louis' humanity made him incredibly appealable to many vampires including Armand and it was the main reason why Lestat just couldn't seem to let him go. He is incredibly powerful due to not just consuming Lestat's blood to feed on but also as it was the blood that transformed him into a vampire. Louis was able to withstand the destructive rays of the sun when trying to end his life after no longer wanting to live as an immortal. Hands down, one of my favourite characters. Number 10. Pandora Pandora is a despairing immortal who initially wanted immortality but soon regretted her choice and turned into a dark, indifferent, cynic individual. She didn't seek to end her life but was not objective to an ending by means beyond her control, like when she quietly refused Akasha and expected to be incinerated by the Queen of the Damned. She had a very close relationship with Marius for centuries until they parted ways as Marius regretfully grew bored a mistake he quickly realised. She is immensely powerful but even as of the book's current timeline, is still disillusioned with life. Number 9. Marius de Romanus One of the most prominent and important figures from the Vampire Chronicles, Marius de Romanus has lived a life full of excitement, betrayal, happiness, sadness, pain, power seeking, power achieving. He is one of the most powerful vampires of all time. Marius took care of Akasha and Enkil as they remained in a slumber-like state for millennia. He dedicated himself to them both and was allowed to drink from Akasha on several occasions, more than anyone else, and gained great power as a result. Marius' story is revealed in Blood and Gold and is right up there with Armand as one of the best, most well-developed characters from the Vampire Chronicles. Number 8. Rocha Mendes Rosha Mendez was made directly by Akasha herself 1,000 years after her own creation. Being Akasha's fledgling, he was extremely powerful due to having a direct connection to the Sacred Core. He ruled the vampires of France, strictly keeping their population under control. I found that out of all the recurring characters, Anne Rice was kinda harsh towards Rosha Mendez, especially during confrontations with Lestat, with the writer always seeming to favour Lestat in the outcome which seen Rosha Mendes regularly humiliated. Number 7. Cayman One of the oldest vampires in existence at 6,000 years old, Cayman was made by Akasha herself not long after she became the first vampire. He was turned against his will in order to test whether Akasha and Enkil's bloodlust would lessen with the more vampires made. Cayman then made as many vampires as he possibly could in order to create an army to stop the king and queen he was once so loyal to. He was immensely powerful but doesn't appear too much in the books and I like it that way if I'm honest as it keeps the mystique around his character fresh. Number 6. Teshkamen Teshkamen is an ancient vampire who served in Akasha's cult of blood for thousands of years. He was known as the god of the grove and served in a shrine in northern France. He was badly damaged and weakened after Akasha and Enkil were exposed to the sun by a vampire known as the Elder. 
It was Tish Cameron who sent Maul and Avikas to find a new replacement as God of the Grove, which led to them choosing Marius de Romanus. Tesh Kamen then assisted with the creation and development of the Talamasca. Number 5. Makare Makare is one of the most uniquely interesting vampires from the entire series. She once lived alongside her sister Mahared as one of the red-haired witch twins who was taken to commit by Akash's army. She was sexually assaulted by Cayman against his own will and her own will before the latter turned her into an immortal. When she was captured and separated from her sister, she was placed into a stone coffin and sent west, where it's believed that she lived wildly in the South American jungle. She returns to the Sonoma compound and consumed the sacred core after Akash's death. Number 4. Maharet Maharet is another ancient vampire who plays a key role in the Queen of the Damned and alongside her sister was responsible for the death of Akasha in the Sonoma compound. She was originally billed as one of the red-haired witch twins taken to commit by Akasha who was eager to learn how their powers worked. Maharet is one of the most powerful vampires to walk the earth and was changed into a vampire by her sister Makare after the latter was turned by Cayman. Her backstory and character development is really well written and if you haven't read Queen of the Damned, I do it alone just to discover Maharet's story. Number 3. And Kill The first ever vampire fledgling to exist, Akash's husband, King Enkil of Kemet, was only seconds to Akash's power. His lust for blood was so insatiable that he drank until he lost the will to drink, unable to quench his thirst. He ruled alongside Akasha as gods for centuries, drinking the land dry before submitting to a trance-like state alongside his queen, refusing to continue existing as anything more than a sitting statue. He was killed by Akasha after she needed his blood to regain her strength and power in order to pursue Lestat and begin her plan to rid the world of men. Number 2. Akasha I don't think anyone would be surprised that Akasha sits so high in this list, given that she's the first vampire in existence. The Great Mother, the Queen of Kemed, the Queen of the Damned. Akasha is linked to every vampire in existence and it was the first to have the power of the fire gift. She can direct it individually or can spontaneously combust hundreds of vampires at will. She is the holder of the Sacred Core, a powerful entity that allows all vampires to currently exist. She can also walk in the sun without bursting into flames and was the first vampire to be able to fly. Her bloodthirst was so insatiable that like her husband, she lost the will to drink and entered into a statue-like state for millennia being cared for by a select few vampires. She was killed after revealing her plan to eradicate 90% of the men from the planet as the other ancient vampires overpowered her. Number 1. Lestat de Leoncourt Was there anyone else other than the brat prince Lestat de Leoncourt to be the most powerful vampire in existence? What's interesting about Lestat's power is that it wasn't gained through age, practice or power seeking. Lestat was by no means ancient. He was one of the youngest vampires in existence and it angered other vampires to see him grow so powerful without having to be hundreds of years old first. He got the shortcut to power basically. His blood is so powerful from feeding on ancient vampires and also holding the sacred core at one point, there was nobody that could rival him for power. He's the most famous name from the Vampire Chronicles for a reason and rightfully holds top spot as Anne Rice's most powerful vampire. Guys, why not continue your Vampire Chronicles journey by clicking on my ultimate Vampire Chronicles playlist where I cover the lives of some of the biggest characters from the books like Lestad, Louis, Marius, Akasha, Claudia and many, many more.